Hello and welcome. In this section, we'll explore ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. That's a protocol that is going to map IP addresses and MAC addresses, and that is required at the link level. So we'll explore in this class what is ARP, the different messages. We'll go to GNS3, and we'll capture some packets on Wireshark. And then in the upcoming classes, we'll tweak that ARP configuration in RouterOS. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. Basically, the main idea is that protocol is going to help to get the MAC addresses. If there is a device that is sending a packet to a destination IP, then that device is going to require the MAC address. Because that packet can be going to the router or can be going to that destination device directly if that device is in the same network. So in this class, we'll understand how ARP works and we'll see those messages just in the wire by going with Wireshark. ARP is going to work dynamically, but also we can have a manual configuration. So we'll explore those two ways to configure ARP in the upcoming classes. We'll know that when one device is trying to talk to another device, the device is going to start with the application level. So in that level, it's going to have some data, then it's going to go down through the OSI or TCP model, depending on which version you are using. But basically, we'll start with some data at the top. Then that is going to hit the transport where we are going to manage ports. Like, for example, if you are using TCP, you will have a source port, a destination port, or if you are using UDP, something similar is going to happen. So every time that that data is passing through those layers, we are going to have some additional headers. So at the transport layer, we are going to have the layer 4 header. Then that is going to go to the network layer where we are managing IP addresses. So now we are going to have a packet that is going to have some IPs at the layer 3 header. It's going to have the layer 4 header and then the data. But then we need to get into the data link layer. That is the layer number 2. And here, to send those frames, we are going to require MAC addresses. But at that point, that device is only going to know the IPs, the source IP and the destination IP. So to get the destination MAC address, then this device is going to use ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. So basically, ARP is going to take one IP, that device is going to send a message looking for a device with that IP, and get the MAC address for that specific device. So we'll explore in the next diagram how that is going to happen, and then this is going to be better. We'll explore in a diagram which options do we have when we're using ARP. First of all, we need to understand that every device in a network is going to have an IP and also going to have a subnet mask. For example, in this case, that PC has the IP 192.168.10.100, and then we have the subnet mask. Slash 24. So that means that there are 24 bits from the IP that are used for that network. Now the operating system running in that device, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, iOS, or any other operating system, is able to determine what is the network address. So basically, these two values can go through a process that is called the ANDing process. But basically, it's a mathematical operation with binary numbers. And at the end, this is going to determine what is the network address. So for example, this is going to say the network address is 192.168.10.0.24. So that is going to be the network address. If that device is going to send packets to a destination IP, now that device is able to know if that destination IP belongs to the same network or to a remote network. For example, if we have this PC here that has the IP 192.168.10.100.24, now, now the source PC is able to know if that IP belongs to that network. If the answer to that question is yes, that means that that PC can send a frame directly to that device. 
So that means that we don't need a router if we have devices in the same network. So for example, if that PC is sending a packet to that one, the packet is going to look something like this. We are going to have a source IP that is going to be 10.100. And then we are going to have the destination IP that is going to be 10.101. And then we have the layer 4 header and we have some data if there is data in that packet. But uh, to send that packet over that link, we need the layer 2 header. And that header can be Ethernet, can be wireless, for example. And then we need some additional information in that layer 2 header. There are several fields in that header. So we have explored that in our TCP IP section here in the course. But basically, the two main components of the layer 2 header is the destination MAC and the source MAC. And basically, that's the physical address of the network cards. Obviously, that device knows its local MAC address. So, for example, if that interface there has the MAC address AA, so there are six pairs of hexadecimal values, just to simplify, I'm adding just two values. So let's say that that MAC address is AA, and the MAC address here is BB. The source device knows its source RP, knows the destination IP, and also knows the source MAC address. But that device has no idea about the destination MAC. But that value is required to send that frame over the link. And here is when ARP is going to come to play. So now the device needs to get the MAC address. And basically what it's going to do is that it's going to send a message that is called ARP request that basically is asking in that broadcast domain what's the MAC address that is mapped to this specific IP or who is this IP. And then this is a message that is going to a broadcast address at the layer 2 level. So basically all the devices that are connected in that broadcast domain, there's going to be everything there. If we have more PCs here, all those devices will receive that request message. But obviously only one device is going to have that IP. So for example, if this is the IP 102, 103, those devices will get the request message and they will say, nope, this guy is looking for 101, but I'm 102 or 103. So basically they will simply read the message, but they will drop that message. They are not going to reply. But that device has the IP 101. Now that device knows that someone is looking for its MAC address. And then it's going to reply back with a message that is called ARP reply. And basically that device is saying, OK, my MAC address is BB. So that source PC on the left now has all the information required to build a frame and it's going to put that information there in the frame and now that frame will be sent to the switch and then the switch will forward that frame to that PC. We'll see how that switch is going to go with that forwarding process in our next section. But for now, we need to understand that there are two messages. Our request that basically is asking who has the MAC address for a specific device that is delivered in a broadcast fashion inside that broadcast domain. And then the device with that IP is going to reply with a message that is called ARP reply. And that message is going to contain the MAC address for that specific device. And this is how that PC got some help from the ARP protocol and now has the information about the destination can build a frame and can forward that frame directly to that device. So that's basically how ARP works if the destination is on the same network. But what happens if, for example, that operating system knows that the network address is that address, but now the destination is that laptop that we have here on the router, but this is in a different network. 
So for example, the, the IP in that device can be 192, 168, 11, 100. So if this device is sending a packet to the IP 11.100 and the source IP is 10.100, now the operating system here knows that the destination IP is in a remote network, is not on the same network. So in that case, we must use a router because in a layer two domain, we only have direct connectivity with devices in the same network. The operating system knows that that is the network and also knows that the destination IP does not belong to that network. In that case, the default gateway is going to be the router that we have here on the right. You can see that the IP for that default gateway is 192.168.10.1. So now that PC is going to send that packet to the router, and then the router will deliver that packet to that destination device. But at the layer 2, that network card with MAC address AA is going to send that frame to the MAC address on the router, not to the MAC address in that laptop. So those MAC addresses are visible only inside the broadcast domain. So now, since this device knows that the destination IP is in a remote network, it's going to deliver the frame to the router. The information that it's going to have in that layer 2 header is going to be the MAC in the router. So that means that the destination in this case is going to be CC and the source is going to be AA. But at that point, that laptop has no idea about the destination back in the router. And that's why it's also going to require ARP. So again, it's going to send a message that is ARP request asking who has the IP 10.1 because that's the default gateway. That device here is going to say, nope, I'm not, I'm 10.101, but the router has the IP 10.1, so the router is going to reply with an ARP reply message saying, okay, my MAC is CC. Now the device has the information that is required and is forward that to the router. So you can see that ARP is playing a pretty critical and important role because without MAC addresses, that device won't be able to send frames to local devices or devices in the same network or remote devices, devices connected in a different network. So let's see this in action by going to GNF3 and then you will see how a device is going to look for that MAC address before forwarding packets to a destination device. So I have the same topology that we used in the previous module. So we have two PCs, we have this network, 0 slash 24 will perform the first test by going with devices in the same network. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to capture packets in that link. So I will go here, start capture. This is going to launch Wireshark. And then we'll see what information we can see in that link. So now we'll go back to GNS3 and I will start that device. I will go to the console for that device and I will try to get an IP via DHCP and then I will do the same on that uh, PC4 that we have there. So I will type IP DHCP. Now it's going through the DORA process that we covered in the previous section. And this device got the IP 3.199. So that's PC3. Let's do the same with PC4. So I'm going to start the device. I will go to console. I will do IP DHCP. And now it got 3198. So if I go to PC3 and I send a ping to 192.168.3198. So at this point, PC3 knows the source IP because it's 3.199 knows the destination IP, because I type in the IP, knows the local MAC address, because knows the information about his local network interface, 
but uh, that PC has no idea about the MAC address of 3.198. So that means that it's going to use ARP to get that MAC address. So I will simply press enter. You can see that now the device is getting those messages back. But before sending those frames, actually that device had to use ARP. If we check on Wireshark, we can see that when that device was trying to establish the connection, so we can see here the MAC 6806, the device sent a message. There is an ARP message asking about the MAC address for the IP 192.168.3.198. That message was a broadcast message. So we'll stop this capturing process. So we can see here destination is broadcast. And if I see the fields, you can see that source MAC is the MAC of the device that is sending the ping request and the broadcast is the destination, all Fs. And this is a request message. If I expand that section, we can see that the source IP is 3.199, the destination is a broadcast and the target is 3.198. Even though the destination MAC is broadcast, the address resolution protocol is sending the information about the target, the destination. Then that frame hit that device with that IP and then that device is sending the response. Basically saying that IP is using that MAC address 6802 and if we see the content of the packet we can see here reply, sender MAC address 02, sender IP 3198 and this is the information about now the target because it's going from the previous destination to the previous source. And this is how the device got that information. And we can see that then we have the ping request. And if we check this packet going from 199 to 198, and now if we check the layer 2 information, this is going from the MAC 6806 to the MAC 6802. So that's how the source device knew about the MAC address of the destination MAC by using ARP. But what happens if we are sending a packet to an IP on internet? So for example, if we are sending a packet to 8.8.8.8. .8 so what is going to happen there? So now I will stop this uh, capture here and I will restart that uh, process again. And now instead of sending a packet to a device that is on the same network, I will send a ping to one IP on internet. So I will come here to PC3. I will go to the console again. And now I will send a ping to 8.8.8.8. .8 and I will press enter. So now the device is sending that to an IP that belongs to a different network. The operating system knows that the IP is not on the same connected network. So now we're going to look for the default gateway. So if I check the information on that PC, we can see that the default gateway is 3.1. So basically this PC must send a packet to that router and this router will be able to deliver that to the internet. So that means that now that device needs the MAC address of Ether2 in that device. So let's see how that looks like in Wireshark. So if I come here to Wireshark, I'm going to stop this process. You can see that now that PC is looking for the MAC address of 3.1. So this is pretty important for your exam. If you are taking the MTCNA exam in the future, remember the ARP is only going to look for MAC address in the same broadcast domain. So in this case, this is not the MAC address of 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. It's looking for the MAC address of the router, the default gateway, that link. And then the router is replying with the, with the MAC 0002. And you can see that the pin request is using that information at the layer 2. 0002, the MAC on the router. This is the MAC on the PC. But the layer 3 information remains the same. So still, this is going to have the destination IP as 8.8.8.8. .8 so it's not going to change. That is going to be exactly the same. This is how our works. I hope that this class has been informative for you. In our next class, we'll explore how RouterOS is going to deal with that process when the router is performing those operations. Thank you, and I see you in the next one.